and uh, Virgo Coating R&D collaboration uh, about the study of several issues in the field of uh, thermal noise. So let me start with an overview. I will talk about the crystalline materials, and particularly in terms of thermoelastic damping in silicon and in sapphire, and uh, because it is interesting for what regards the uh, substrates that are used in metrology to study the uh, losses of coatings. And uh, I will give you some information about the modification of thermoelastic damping after coating, as we know uh, so far. And uh, I will outline the, the objectives of the collaboration inside the Virgo coating R&D group and, and the results that we obtained so far. So why we are interested in crystalline material, Jerome said a lot about this, so I will not give more details about that, but we are, sorry, we are basically focusing on uh, silicon and sapphire here. And for, uh, of course, the aim is the cryogenic uh, temperatures uh, of cryogenic detectors, uh, next generation detectors. And <coughs> the knowledge of properties of these uh, substrates at low temperatures are, are, uh, must be known to uh, predict the thermal noise at the end. And of course, uh, also coating losses is what we want to work out from our research uh, to optimize them. <coughs> uh, and uh, what we usually do is to look at the effect on the loss of substrates. So we have to know very precisely the loss of substrates that we are using in this uh, task uh, to work out the coating loss. Uh, so what we suppose is that the coating uh, of the losses of the substrate are independent on the coating deposition. This is not the case, for instance, for thermoelastic damping. And we have to evaluate the energy stored in the coating with respect to the total energy of the variability in the sample in order to work out <coughs> the uh, um, contribution from the coating. Uh, this can be done by finite element analysis or, in some cases, analytically or with a direct measurement of the frequency shift after the coating deposition. So first of all, what is thermoelastic damping? Uh, it's just uh, an effect uh, <coughs> of the um, uh, heat uh, diffusion inside the sample when it's vibrating. It's uh, um, due to the fact that you have a relaxation time uh, in order to allow the heat flow coming from the uh, uh, compressive part toward the expanded part of the, of the vibrating body. And in, for instance, in silicon disks, due to the high uh, conducti thermal conductivity, this loss is uh, the main contribution to the total loss of the, of the substrate. You can work out the contribution from thermoelastic damping in several ways. Uh, we, will do, we have done it, this uh, for cylinders. Uh, relying on this kind of, uh, of computation. Uh, you have just to uh, evaluate the rate of st um, generation of heat, that is uh, the rate of entropy uh, uh, in the cycle and the, of the oscillation, and then the amount of energy that is uh, dissipated with this formula. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so, uh, this at the end is what we have found. Uh, Martelli and Pier Giovanni uh, wrote this formula for a uh, cylinder. You see it's a very complicated formula, but at the end, uh, all the, re the recipe is made with this amplitude, which is basically the same as for the Zener thermoelastic damping. Uh, this sum of the bi-peaks, uh, characterized by their uh, peak frequency, and these are just the normalization coefficients. And this uh, quantity here, that is a um, uh, this defined as the, the, the energy of dilatation inside the sample divided by the total energy is a dilution factor. But if you look at, uh, inside, instead of a cylinder, you look at, at a disk, you find that uh, basically all these terms are relevant only when k, this index here, is 1, so they can sum it up to 1. And uh, for all those uh, contributions, the peak frequency is just the same, al almost the same. So at the end, you have just one, the by peak, and the main, <laughs> uh, the relevant term uh, is, uh, in this case, the dilution factor in front of the, uh, of the sum. 
Uh, so, the dilution, what is the effect of the dilution factors? It depends on the shape of the modes. So, uh, if you have a family of modes with uh, similar shapes, for instance, uh, butterfly modes, you will find that this, uh, these, are, these are the dilution factors, and the red uh, stars are uh, the butterfly modes. So, you find that this, there is a curve representing this uh, family of modes. There are other families of mixed modes, and this, uh, at the end, uh, makes uh, your loss measure, loss peak, the by peak, uh, become branched in several parts due to the, the, due to the effect of this uh, um, dilution factor. You see here the measurement at LMA on a silicon disk that uh, has shown exactly this effect, this branching of the loss angle due to the thermoelastic damping because of the different shapes of the moon. This is again the same, but with uh, sapphire. We, we have uh, experimental data that are the uh, red do dots for the thermoelastic uh, um, loss damping in uh, sapphire, in the sapphire disk, compared with the computation uh, of uh, the expected thermoelastic damping according to the formula that I gave at the beginning, uh, about using the finite element analysis to work out the dilution factor. The same has been done also at PTB with the console uh, tool. You see that the, 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 the data are well fitted by this computation. Now, uh, what happens if you have a, a coating on top of this substance? You know the thermoelastic damping for the substance. You put a coating on top on this, of it, and you find something strange. You see here the bar substrate. This is a silicon substrate. Bar substrate, substrate is represented by blue dots. After the coating, the red dots show a loss that is lower than before. So this is strange. But we have to keep in mind that the thermoelastic <coughs> damping is not the same after the coating deposition because it, 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 you have an impact of the coating on, on the thermoelastic damping itself. We try to evaluate this uh, impact in, uh, with a, a formula, very complicated actually formula, given by Bishop Ekira in a paper. Uh, that is, uh, has been computed for a slab with uh, two coatings on the two faces, which is, is a slab, it's not a disk, but it should be very close to what, uh, should give hints on what we have to expect in our case. If you see here, actually there is a reduction of the thermoelastic damping due to the coating, and in, in the range of 10% in this case, with four microns of uh, total coating. So we are in the right direction, uh, so we studied uh, which, is, which are the, the parameters that has impact on this kind of thing, so this kind of change of, of thermal acid damping. And we found that, uh, for instance, there is no strong dependency on thermal conductivity. This was something unexpected for us. But of course, there is an impact of, uh, of the thickness of the coating. This is obvious. But also other parameters are important. For instance, here you see the impact of uh, the um, heat capacity of the coating layer. I don't know, but probably capacity is not so well known for a, a film uh, in this case. So the thermoelastic effect seems to be affected by uh, the coating in the adiabatic part uh, at high frequency. And they, of course, the effect increases with the uh, coating thickness. And they strongly depend on heat capacity, also on thermal expansions and other param parameters of the coating. This is another example. You see here the uh, blue dots are the po measured point for a silicon uh, disk with two microns of silica on top of the faces. Uh, the, the dots stay on uh, the bi-peak because we divided them by the um, dilution factor, so we recovered the, the, the bi-peak. And then we worked out the red dots with this formula, assuming for the coating loss angle a value that is reasonable for silica. Then we try to explain this reduction with the formula from Bishop Kinger, and you see that uh, it fits uh, pretty well with the data. Okay. <coughs> now let's come to the objectives of the Virgo coating R&D. These are twofold, developing new coating materials in the range of 2022 for the upgrades of advanced Virgo, and understanding a loss, losses in amorphous materials too a certain amount, growing the research in the general context of the physical classes, and 
with the, 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 the help of cryogenic measurements uh, to understand the origin, the source of the physical processes involved. This is a bunch of collaboration with, uh, that are working side by side with the Virgo coating R&D uh, that is already collaborating with Yen and PTB. Uh, Vision, that is a project on, on studying the origin of relaxation in, with the LMA and other frame, within in the framework of French uh, physics. And this is a FET, I think, an European project on crystalline coatings that is going on within the collaboration. Um, what, what are the objectives? There is a part dedicated to meteorology because we want to have a, a strong interpretation of loss measurements in all the substrate. It is not always clear what we measure because in silica, for example, we, we have aging, we have a problem with the polish of, of the barrel surfaces, so it's not always reproduci reproducible what we found, find, and so we have to make a clear interpretation of this phenomena. And uh, also we have to validate gens with respect to other setups because there is some slight difference among what has been measured with different techniques. There is a study on no new materials, new oxides, and nitrides, fluorides, and the mixing and non composites. And a study has been, will be devoted to, the, uh, to optimize the deposition parameters during the production of coatings. Uh, this is a sketch of all the uh, Virgo coating R&D collaboration. You see lo several uh, laboratories from Italy, uh, Genova, Urbino, Perugia, Roma 2, and Lyon in France, Salerno Sagno, and Lyon and uh, the University of Salerno Sagno has the possibility to produce coatings. Uh, and there is a characterization of those coatings spread among all the collaboration with, uh, for instance, gens, uh, nodal suspensions in uh, Roma, uh, as I think very soon also in Urbino, uh, probably also in Perugia, in Lyon, and uh, optical characterization in Genova, and, and so on. What we uh, obtained so far, we have a, a paper. We, we wrote a paper for PLA on mold families in silicon. There is something very similar for sapphire in preparation. And also we have first positive results on niobia and those uh, silicon nitrides. Um, there is this point of devolution of silica with annealing, uh, where the loss is very low after the strong annealing at 900 degrees. And Salerno Sanio facility for uh, coating is already started produ production of samples. We will have a talk from Maria in a while. And uh, we started the validation of the, uh, of the, of the methods for the measurement of coating loss the one with respect to the other. Particularly at the moment, we are co comparing different genes uh, in different parts. And it seems that what we find, we are finding now, is that the genes is very reproducible, but we have a problem when the losses are very, very low for silica samples, for them, namely, uh, because of the aging of silica in this case. It's not a limit of the suspension. Uh, we also had a test of, on the polish on this uh, barrel surface because uh, the barrel of the disc usually comes with no polishing. So you can have a mechanical polishing and we can have uh, in our group also a CO2 laser polishing of those, of those barrels that should reduce the losses but also uh, make them stay at the same level in time, avoiding aging, but this is still under study. And uh, as I said, we will have a new laboratory in Urbino with gens and in a while a cryogens for cryogenic measurement of loss angle of coding. So, and that's it. Thank you. Questions? Okay, so I have at least one. So what will be the, the links, I would say, between Okay, what you propose for Virgo and what uh, LIGO scientific collaborations will, mm -hmm. will also develop. So what will be the different links? Do, will you test similar ideas, different ideas? How you will exchange things? Okay. Uh, yes, I think is, we should do something in that direction because uh, we have uh, this part of study of silica, uh, of um, amorphous uh, uh, materials, so physica, physics of glasses. 
Uh, at the moment, we are starting on that, so uh, I think this is the direction that we will follow definitely. And we have this collaboration with Caltech, for instance, because we are studying the effect of the annealing. But this is the main point, because all what we want to do in, in terms of experimental work depends on what we know about the substance, because otherwise this is... A, so we are collaborating with Caltech uh, uh, with this topic. This is the first one in the moment, at the moment. Uh, maybe this was on your slide of, you know, Italy uh, and France with all, but I, I, didn't, I didn't have time to read all of it. Now, I, I, I just wanted to know if there's someone that is working at direct measurement of the thermal noise of the coding, not uh, mechanical properties to infer thermal noise. No. You know, Matt Evans at MIT, yes. since a couple of years, has developed a very okay, ha handy facility to do that quite right. quickly. Actually, there is the idea to uh, provide uh, us with, uh, with the same CTN that the Matt... Uh, as in MIT, um, because we need the direct measurement, definitely. Uh, so probably this will be something in certain future projects, because we don't have at the moment. What we have at the moment is an interferometer at LMA uh, that is conceived to measure the loss, directly the, loss, uh, the, um, the thermal noise, but on uh, cantilevers, with just a single. So it is able to, to look at the thermal noise over just a single layer but only in the, let's say, along the beam direction. And this, so it has not the sensitivity to look actually at the level of the CTN. So it has its advantages, but is not uh, that level. So we, we, yeah, I think we will definitely try to have something similar in the future, but for the moment, no. Okay, any other questions, comments? Okay, so let, let's thanks again to the speaker. Thank you. Thank you.